And welcome to Black Renaissance, everyone. I'm your host, Kristen Ayers. We begin this show with a very special woman. Her name, Dr. Mae Jemison. She's the first African-American woman ever to voyage into outer space. Jemison was a crew member on the Space Shuttle Endeavor back in 1992. Since touching down, she's been working to help African-American, Latino children, and women reach the same heights through STEM. That's science, education, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I had the honor of meeting meeting her at the Exploratorium when she was here in San Francisco earlier this week. What I'm really excited about being here this week in the Bay Area is the fact that uh, Bear is helping to unveil a program called Circle Labs over in uh, Oakland, which is really about bringing STEM activities, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics activities into to, uh, neighborhoods where maybe the students don't get that in school and also to expose them to different careers. So this whole partnership between Bayer, um, Cal State, East Bay, as well as the East Bay Economic uh, Council is really about how do we promote science literacy for all students? How do we start to change and facilitate science education? Why do we want to do that? It's because when you look at it, first of all, there are incredible jobs that are associated with science fields. People need to be science literate in order to be able to function throughout the day and in the world, and also so that we can actually solve problems better as a society. What are we not doing right now to get young women and minorities interested in science, technology, and engineering and math? There is definitely a gap there. What can be done? So I would tell you the gap is not in interest. The gap is in whether or not we develop their skills and talents. There's something that's really interesting. Girls do as well or better than boys in science and math all the way through high school. We never hear that. But they do. But the difference is, is whether they decide they want to follow it as a career, right? Whether you talk about a technician career or four-year degree. And I think a lot of that has to do with the images we show them, whether or not those are girl jobs, right? And so we really have to start changing the exposure to what we do and what people can be. And that's part of the whole idea with STEM initiatives. The same thing with um, you know, African Americans and Latinos. How do we make sure that they're exposed to that, that they know that they can be um, all of this range of jobs, not only you know physicians or astronauts, but there's just a myriad of jobs, geologists, geographers. There's so many things that can happen. I always like to say when people talk about science literacy, they get all nervous, right? But science literacy is just being able to read an article in the newspaper about us the climate, about health care, and figure out how to vote on it. Well, we're here at the Exploratorium. This is definitely a great place that's hands-on, where kids really get a chance to get in there and interact with some of the exhibits. Um, we have this incredible resource. It's called Children and Their Resilience and Their Desire to Explore the World Around Them. We are born scientists. You know, looking at the bugs, the snails, why do I breathe, asking questions, trying experiments, all those kinds of things, right? We don't call them experiments, but you know, you see kids dropping stuff and they're learning about the world around them. What we have to do is make sure we continue taking advantage of this really prodigious construct when they go into school. How to do that? By doing hands-on science, right? By hands-on education. You don't try to teach people to read by telling them about reading. They have to read, right? So how do you teach them about science without having them to do science? And then I would also go to parents. There's something where we're, okay, we're saying, you know, everybody can't do math and science, right? It's okay for us to say that. We would never feel okay saying you can't learn to read. It's okay not learning to read. Um, I also think about when we're starting to look at girls, it's so much about, socialization. You cannot explore if you have to keep your hair neat and your clothes nice and clean. You know, how do you do mud pies and stay clean, right? <laughs> how do you do all these things that let you explore the world around you if you can't get your clothes dirty, if you can't get your hands dirty? And I think that's part of what we have to look at. As a little girl growing up, 
I wanted to do all kinds of things. I knew I wanted to be a scientist, right? But I played with Barbie dolls, right? I uh, wanted to be a professional dancer and danced, did all of those things. But one of the things I, um, you know, maybe people weren't thrilled with this, I didn't feel like I had to stay kept all the time, right? <laughs> because you can't do things like that. You can't even be an athlete, an athlete. You can't be a dancer if you aren't willing to sweat. There's a movie coming out called Hidden Figures, which um, chronicles the work of, of African-American women who are in the space program, who are fundamental for us spending the space race. The Hidden space Figures space focuses in on She's three of them, and particularly Katherine Johnson. Does she handle analytic geometry? Absolutely. And she speaks. Yes, sir, I do. Which one? Both. Geometry and speaking. Ruth, uh, get me the... You think you can find me the Frenet frame for this data? Using the gram schmidt Fourth organization algorithm? Yes, sir. I prefer it over Euclidean coordinates. But data also notes that there were women um, African-American women, Caucasian women, who were part of this incredible journey into space that we just left them out. In fact, Katherine Johnson was so good that John Glenn refused to fly until she verified the orbital calculations that the computer had made. Wow. You know, if we had known that, how does it change our viewpoint? Right? So these were women who were also trained in historically black colleges and universities in the 1950s and the 1940s, and they were fundamental to making things happen. We can find them. So here's the deal. When people say they can't find folks, they're full of it. <laughs> and, and I'm going to just say that uh, point and blank. put it out there and point blank. A lot of tech companies will say, I don't understand how we get more girls in the computer sciences. We can find them. It's just that we have to task ourselves to do it. It's not the sufficient to say, oh, they didn't fall in my lap because I went to the same place as I always went. Right now, I lead a project called 100 Year Starship, and it's about making sure that we have the a capabilities for human travel beyond our solar system to another star within the next 100 years. I led the team that won the seed funding grant from DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. It's an independent organization. But our proposal title was called an inclusive, audacious journey transforms life here on Earth and beyond. And I would tell you that this word inclusion being at the front meant inclusion across ethnicity, gender, and geography, also inclusion around disciplines, and how do we make sure that this is used to enhance life here on Earth. And I would tell you, this Geek Prize of the Year in 2011 may not have looked that way if I hadn't been there working on this because it makes a difference who's involved. And we have people across the gamut um, who are working on this project. But it makes a difference who you have, how you apply things, how you look at problems, and how you move them forward. And I would argue, and I think you would too, that it makes it better the more inclusion you have. Not mincing any words, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Dr. Jemison. We really appreciate having You're you on welcome. today. An amazing woman with amazing ideas. It was a pleasure talking to Dr. Mae Jemison. And we thank the Exploratorium for having us there. The museum is teaming up with NASA next summer for the solar eclipse. It's a huge deal and a chance for you to actually be a scientist yourself and watch a full eclipse from this part of the world. On August 21st in 2017, there's a total solar eclipse that begins in Oregon and moves all the way across the country uh, to South Carolina. It's really exciting. It's the first time in many, many years that the Americans will be able to experience a total solar eclipse. You know, the Exploratorium is all about getting people to ask really good questions about the world, to wonder how things work, how light bounces off that wall, how the tides work. So when you see something like a total solar eclipse, which is just awe-inspiring, it's beautiful, it leads you to ask really good questions. What about the sun? What about the moon? What's the interaction between them? Does the sun affect the Earth? And when you see images of the sun, these bright, huge prominences jumping off the surface of the sun, you can't help but get excited and want to know more. 
So fun teaming up at the Exploratorium. For more information, you can go to their website, exploratorium.edu slash eclipse. And for more on Dr. Jemison's work with the Bayer STEM Education Initiative, go to makingsciencemakesense.com. Black Renaissance will be right back in a moment.